G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're back at one of our favourite tanks, Coffin Reef. We're going to be doing a massive lighting upgrade and also upgrading some other aspects of the tank. We're going to show you the lights that we've chosen, why we've chosen them, how to program them and how to mount them. So, let's get into our lighting upgrade on Coffin Reef. So, the lights that we have running for Coffin Reef are Radions. They're Gen 2 XR30s. And they've been on this tank for probably about about eight years I reckon and um, it's it's time to replace them we haven't had any uh, problems with them in terms of we haven't had uh, it's been the same six the whole eight years and uh, they've been doing really well over this tank except that LED LEDs do actually lose intensity over time and I'm also keen to change them because it's a little bit difficult for us to get in and change the uh, programs on these uh, lights because they don't run on a reef link. Uh, they actually have to be tethered to a, a laptop for us to control them. And that's just a little bit um, difficult for this tank. So we're going to take out these six uh, Gen 2 Radions and replace them with something really special. Let's have a look at that. So today we're going to be replacing our Gen 2 Radions with the Gen 5 Radions. Now we've chosen the Gen 5 Radions because they're an excellent light and they're going to provide a very even spread of light across the tank. And the reason for this is they've actually changed the configuration of the diodes on the light. You'll know, uh, you'll see with previous generations of Radions that there's two clusters of the diodes and with the Gen 5s, the diodes are evenly spread out across the, the light. Now that means that they don't have the fan on the underside like previous models. The fan is in, in fact on the top with these lights. Now one of the other reasons why we were particularly keen to go for the Gen 5s is because the Gen 5s will uh, work on the Mobius app. So we can control these lights very, very easily using the Mobius app, but it'll also allow us to control the, the return pump which we're going to be installing also today. We're going to be putting on the Ecotech Vectra L2. So this will mean that Coffin Reef will be powered by uh, Radions, Ecotech Radions. The return pump will be the Ecotech Vectra L2, and we already have the Ecotech Wavemakers 2 MP40s. So, we're going to start by taking uh, all of the Gen 2 radions off Coffin Reef. Uh, now, it's not quite as easy as it might sound because all of our cables have been fed through the, a hole in the tank down into the cabinet and uh, we have to take all the power supplies out. But, let's get started on that before, so we can put on our XR30 Radion Pro Gen 5s. So whilst Reef Bid is taking the Gen 2s off of Coffin Reef, we'll just have a quick look at the difference between the Gen 2s and the Gen 5s. This is the first one that he's taken off the system and um, the first thing you'll notice is we've got these two diode clusters and the fan on the underside. But one of the reasons why it's actually difficult for him to take these lights off the old system is that the cables go down behind the cabinet, between the cabinet and the wall, and there's not much space. And you've got this relatively large connector. Now let's have a look at the Gen 5s. So, you can see the difference with the diode configuration, uh, an even spread instead of those twin clusters of the, the previous models. But this is what we're going to really enjoy today. The difference between the cables is gonna be very easy for us to feed this sort of narrow diameter 
connector down through the behind the tank or behind the cabinet down into where the power supplies are going to be. And also, we've got the fan on the top. So they're a really beautiful light and they're going to give us the best spread uh, intensity and functionality of uh, pretty much any light on the market. The other major thing that we're doing today is replacing the return pump. We have a Vectra L2 and we've chosen this return pump partly because it's nice to run all Ecotech equipment, the lights, the wave makers and the return pump. We'll be running them all on the Mobius app. But also because one of the main things that we have not liked with the previous return pump is that it's quite loud. And this uh, Vectra L2 should be the quietest option that we've got. And we're going to be plumbing it into the system with a little bit of piping that I've just put together. We're going like so. And we're pretty much just going to cut the soft plastic tubing, attach it onto our hose tail here, and we'll be good to go. It will mean that in the future, if we need to return, uh, replace our pump or take our pump off to service it, we can very easily undo it and take it away, leaving the plumbing in place. They're an excellent return pump, uh, really good value for money. Uh, they're controllable on the Mobius app, but we also have a controller, and I can't wait to get this onto the system and running. So Reefbeard has taken all six of our Gen 2 Radions off the system, and here they are. And here are our Gen 5s. So now we're going to put the Gen 5s on, and then we'll show you how we program them. I've used PVC cement in the joins on our bit of hard plumbing that connects to our Vectra uh, fitting and I've used some uh, thread tape for the two uh, threaded points that are going to go in here. Uh, I don't normally use PVC cement on threads. So Reefbeard's got our Gen 5 Radions in position up on the light rack and now we're just putting in the power supplies. So we're going to start out with the power supplies just on the base of the cabinet. Um, I'm just going to plug them in and connect the light to the power supply. Here we go. So this is our Mobius app, and we're starting by setting the sunrise and the sunset, which is, is quite a long photo period, but we're going to have a very blue spectrum. We're choosing our template, the Coral Lab AV Plus. Okay, that's about right. So this is our edit screen. So this is where we're going to control the intensity and the spectrum at the peak. So um, this is where it gets a bit more complicated too. So we're at 50% at the moment. Um, okay. All right, at these points. So that's full blue, zero, zero, zero. God, that looks good. Okay, save. 
So next point at eight o'clock or seven fifty nine. Uh, so this is we're at 24, 24, 24, okay? And it holds that until 8 p.m. So this is what we have to change. I'm going to move this one across to, this is where it starts to get white. So let's say 10 o'clock, okay? The next one is gonna be Five o'clock, full blue by seven o'clock, full off by ten, five, ten, seven. So we've set the basics for how our schedule is going to work. Uh, the lights first come on at six o'clock and I'm just scrolling through the time points. Uh, by seven o'clock, we've got our uh, blues on 100%. Uh, red, white, green are all at zero, uh, but they don't really get white until 10 o'clock. In fact, I'm gonna pull this across to nine. Okay, so that'll mean that it's blue in the morning from six till nine, slowly becoming more intense, and the full intensity of blue will be nine o'clock. Uh, 10 o'clock is when it'll, uh, the whites will come on, because we're running the AB plus. We've got the red, white, and green in 24%, and the rest are 100. Remembering we're only at 70% uh, total intensity, but I'm actually gonna drop that down. Uh, and five o'clock is uh, when the red, white, and green will start to go down to be fully blue by, I'm gonna change it to six. Okay, uh, six then by, so six o'clock, full blues, and then it fades back to a total uh, lights out at 10 o'clock. All right, so I'm gonna save that. Um, all right. I'm going to change that schedule intensity to, what do you reckon, B? 50%? 50%, okay. So, because we don't want to shock the corals, really not, okay. So because we don't want to shock the corals, our whole schedule is only going to run at 50% intensity. Now, in the next few weeks, we're going to increase that, but at this point, it's very important that we don't shock the corals with too much light. But that's effectively how we're setting our program for this tank. It's time for us to install our Vectra L2. And the plumbing is going to face that way. And all we have to do is remove the existing Laguna pump. And cut the soft plastic hosing and then put the soft plastic hosing onto our hose tail. Now, it might be a bit difficult because this is actually quite old uh, hosing and cutting it I think is going to be difficult but also it's so rigid from its age that just squeezing it onto the hose tail is probably going to be hard as well. Um, and after that it's just going to be a case of hooking up the vector and turning it on. So, I'm going to cut it here. Uh, boy, that is difficult. Uh, there's probably still a bit of water in the hose too. So I'm going to try not to make a mess. All right, that's good. Well, this is interesting. I had no idea there was actually a metal hose clamp on this. You can see it's corroded. Ah. <laughs> All right, as soon as you can feed that uh, cable uh, cord through this way, this is, these are the units of the longest cord in the history of the world, because uh, they're actually a pond pump. All right. All right, let's get rid of this. 
So this is the moment of truth and we're going to be able to get our beautiful plumbing piece onto the supposedly soft plastic hosing and I think it's going to work. We've got a couple of nice big zip, uh, zip ties. You've got to be really careful with these things. It's very easy to get your fingers caught in a zip tie and that can be quite dangerous. So now what we need to do, put our Vectra in. Uh, so here we go, we're finally ready to turn our Vectra on. Uh, Reef Beard has the privilege of being the one to hit the go button. There we are, 60% or thereabouts. And we should see it coming up and out through our return. It's going to be dirty as I stirred the sump up heaps. So you can see that's all bacterial silt and such, which is totally normal. It's not a, a problem. Um, the water will certainly clear. Maybe next time I'll do a bit of a service on the sump. But there you go, our Vectra is working and working beautifully. Now all we need to do is adjust the flow so that we can get it in tune with the overflow system of the tank. That's our job for today. We've got some beautiful lights set up in this tank. It looks so much better. The spread and color is sensational. Uh, it's difficult to tell at the moment because the water's cloudy, but that's because of our excellent Vectra L2. We've stirred up the sump and it's pumped it all up into the tank, but it'll clear up and next time we're here at Coffin Reef, we'll show you a beautiful tank with these lights and the return pump. So thanks for watching Gallery Quaker TV. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. Oh, That's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you've subscribed to our channel so you don't miss an episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Happy reefing!